Blizzard is one of those legendary developers that everyone knows and everyone has probably played at least one game from them, whether it's Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, World of Warcraft, or Overwatch. They have a back catalog of absolute bangers, right? And their games have had a huge impact just generally on gaming. They have had huge respect from the gaming community for such a long time, but now over the last few years, I believe that reputation and that respect has or is being eroded. And I believe with the release of Overwatch 2, they have now lost that reputation and respect they once had. So let's go through what led Blizzard to this point with some of their major controversies. We can go back to 2008 when Vivendi, who owned Blizzard, merged with Activision, led by the devil himself, Bobby Kotick, who could have an entire video dedicated to himself because he is such a scumbag. From firing Cynthia Madvig, if I pronounced that correctly, after she reported being sexually harassed, she sued and he was advised to settle, but to quote him, he would not be extorted and that he would ruin the plaintiff, that's Cynthia, and her attorney and see to it that Miss Madvig would never work again. He lost that case. He has known about even more harassment in the workplace, done nothing about it, and protected the harassers, even going as far as threatening to have an assistant killed. Also, he's rated as one of the most overpaid CEOs currently working. This is the guy that is CEO of Activision Blizzard. What a piece of shit. But back to Blizzard. We can look at the time when they sided with China during the Hong Kong protests back in 2019. This was where thousands of people protested the Fugitive Offenders and Mutual Legal Assistance in Criminal Matters Legislation Amendment Bill 2019. This bill, if I understand correctly, would allow the transfer of fugitives from Hong Kong to China. Thousands were arrested, 2,600 people were injured, and 15 people died. So during the October 2019 Hearthstone Grandmasters streaming event in Taiwan, a player called Blitzchung decided to show support for the protests. Shortly afterwards, he was disqualified from the current tournament and, and was forced to forfeit his winnings to date and was banned for one year. The two shoutcasters engaged in the interview were also penalized with similar bans. Blizzard would go on to say that their bans were justified because anything that brings themselves into public disrepute offends a portion or group of the public or otherwise damages Blizzard's image, all the while severely damaging their own image in the process. GG Blizzard. This led to other Hearthstone players protesting and even got the US government involved, fearing that Activision Blizzard, a US company, was letting China suppress free speech and called for the bans to be lifted. Former Blizzard president, or he was the president at the time, J. Allen Brack would apologize for this at the beginning of BlizzCon 2019, but only reduced the ban period and didn't even name Blitzchung during his little speech. Now we fast forward two months after the apology to the release of Warcraft 3 Refunded. I mean Reforged. They announced this remake of Warcraft 3 with flashy new cutscenes, which never made it into the game. They removed many features from the original, there were technical issues and changes to the UI, gameplay and graphics. The graphics in player's opinion were either not improved enough or looked worse than the 2002 original. Another screw up was that owners of the original version had to update to the new refunded version, which included these changes. Additionally, if you created a custom game, Blizzard would now own that. Such a snaky move by Blizzard and really it's because they were pissy about missing out on the birth of the MOBA genre and specifically the Dota name because that started as a custom game in Warcraft 3. Blizzard would go on to offer refunds and fix stuff with patches. Then we have Diablo Immoral with its microtransactions. The fact that you can spend $100,000 on microtransactions is absurd. There are many videos on this Immoral game. I never played it, even though I have a phone and I never intend to. The fact that they made this big announcement of a Diablo mobile game to a PC gaming crowd at BlizzCon was just another sign of the downturn the company was making, and for many this may have been it for Blizzard, even though Diablo changed their mind and released Diablo Immortal on PC, as well as mobile. So Overwatch 2, this was announced on November 1st, 2019 at BlizzCon with plans that the game would maintain a shared multiplayer environment between it and the original Overwatch. 
This was so players in either game could play PvP together while keeping all their unlocked content. All new heroes, maps and PvP modes were to be added to both games to maintain this shared environment. Also coming to Overwatch 2 was the PvE story mode, the major new addition to the game and really the whole reason for this sequel, since the original plan was for players of Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 to still be able to play together in PvP, meaning the only real difference between the two was the PvE story campaign. Well, fast forward to the release of Overwatch 2, and the servers for Overwatch 1 were taken down, forcing everyone to migrate to Overwatch 2. The PvE content was delayed to some time in 2023. We got three new heroes, six new maps, some old maps were removed from the rotation. We got new skins, the removal of gambling, I mean the loot boxes, removal of player levels and progression, and then we got the battle pass. So in my opinion, Overwatch 2 isn't really a sequel. While there is some new content, it's really just a large patch. I think more effort is put into the yearly releases of the EA Sports Ball titles. The removal of the story mode from launch is a big negative since the only real difference between Overwatch 1 and 2 originally would be the story mode. The removal of player progression also really stinks and is a part of the main reason why Overwatch 2 for me signals the end of the OG Blizzard. You see, when you leveled up in Overwatch 1, you would get a loot box for free and you'll unlock some skins, voice lines, highlight intros, emotes and all that stuff. Loot boxes in general are a scummy gambling addition to games, but used in this way as a reward for progression is fine and a good thing. You would kind of look forward to leveling up for a new loot box so you would hopefully get a cool skin for your hero. Even when the special events were on like Halloween, Christmas or the Olympics, you could get event themed loot boxes to get special skins like this Tracer skin I never used. Cheers, love. In Overwatch 2, when you rank up your level, oh no, you can't. Instead, you rank up your battle pass. If you don't purchase it, you mainly get nothing for each level you gain. And yes, you could argue that's fair. It's a free to play title and free players should really get less since the game needs to make some money from its cosmetics. With the Halloween event in Overwatch 2, you no longer can unlock any of these cool cosmetics. Instead, you complete certain challenges to unlock voice lines, two sprays, a name card, and a weapon charm. Gee, thanks Blizzard. So they've removed these free rewards, and instead they can only be purchased in the in-game store for money. And oh boy, do they want to take your wallet and empty it. Now the battle pass costs 1,000 Overwatch coins. So for me in England, that's £8.39. So if you play the game enough, you can get all the rewards, but Unlike, I think, every other battle pass that exists, it doesn't reward you with any premium currency. And if you don't complete the battle pass before season is over, fuck you. You didn't play the game enough. Tough shit. Buy the next battle pass and play the game more. Or head over to the shop. The real sign that OG Blizzard is dead. You see, a legendary skin now costs you 1,900 Overwatch coins. This means that you need to purchase 2,200 coins for £16.79. So let's be generous and ignore the 10% bonus you get and work out that at that price, 131.03 Overwatch coins is £1. So a 1,900 skin is equal to roughly £14.50. Say that again, £14.50. Now check out Steam and let's look for games under £16 and ignore the games on sale. Is Blizzard really trying to say that these legendary skins are worth more than games like Stardew Valley, Phasmophobia, Payday 2, Vampire Survivors, Terraria, Among Us, Portal, and the list could go on and on. I think if you said yes to any of those, regardless if you like the genre of the games or not, you're probably one of the biggest simps out there. The price of microtransactions is a problem in gaming in general, since they are always, in my opinion, overpriced. Even the tactics they use in the store are scummy, preying on players with FOMO limited time sales such as the Halloween cosmetics. The fact that Blizzard was a player first company shows how far they have fallen with these recent controversies and the microtransactions. It feels like Bobby Kotick, the CEO of Activision Blizzard, has his grubby little claws in deep with Blizzard. You just gotta hope if the Microsoft buyout completes, that they'll help to sort out the direction that Activision Blizzard is taking. But for me, I think it's the end. Not even Diablo 4 is enough to bring it back. Now this content is something that's different for this channel 
This channel has mainly been a gameplay and guides channel, but for now I'm going to be doing this more of like an in-depth investigation and, in my opinion, more interesting content alongside streaming on this channel where I do like to group up with people in chat. I just unlist the stream and put it in a playlist on the channel page, so check out the channel page if you want to see all my previous streams. But next, I'll be looking into what I believe is the biggest cheating scandal in gaming and it's happening right now and it's probably been happening for a few years so give this video a like if you liked it dislike if you didn't let me know what you think of blizzard and bobby kotick down in the comments below it all helps to defeat the youtube algorithm so thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next one cheers